your mobile navigation will be the first thing that your visitors will see on your e-commerce store. And typically mobile nowadays is 70-80% of the traffic. So you should be interested in getting the mobile navigation right. Now, there are five key elements to mobile navigation that we are going to go over in this video with a ton of examples. So I know that you're going to love it. Here I am Samuel Larson. If you're not familiar with the channel yet, we do e-commerce CRO videos all day, every Thursday. So join me, subscribe, like the video, etc. Let's jump into it. Now, first thing here is uh, the hello bar. So here, many stores, we see actually like around half the stores are using a hello bar of some sort. So some examples, free shipping on orders over XX dollars is uh, a good one. And here you can also have it count down in these kind of cases. So this lets people that might be a little bit concerned or curious about the shipping costs know them right away. Let's look at some other examples here. So of course you have that uh, $25 mark. Here's another one free shipping order for orders over $69. You can um, usually like make this a little bit shorter. Here is also an option to close it, which uh, we don't see that many people using in general but sometimes uh, can be helpful. Um, here's another one, up to 50% off summer sale now on. So if you have a specific message that is time bound, you can also use the hello bar for this kind of purpose. And sometimes you'd want to combine that with multiple messages. So here's an example of how that can be done. So you have your free shipping over 45 pounds, TNC supply. Then you have an option to look at different things, 100 day returns, these kinds of things. Um, Typically the hello bar goes away once uh, you start scrolling. So in uh, all of these cases, I believe that is going to be the case because uh, you don't need this message to stick here while uh, you are using the site. It can be quite uh, annoying. So that's uh, the case in uh, all of these examples and it's a recommended uh, way to do this. So that's uh, that if you have a site-wide message that you'd want people to understand. That is a good placement for that. And uh, this is something that you can definitely test as well because it is such a huge decision. It might look like a small thing, but uh, this is one where now it will be on every page, except of course a checkout, and it will be right there up front and center. Next element is the logo. So logo, typically your way of navigating to the front page, and of course, people's way to understand which site they are on. A mobile might not always be that obvious. And typically, the logo will be on the center. There's a good reason for that. And that reason, of course, is when people are using their mobile phones, they will have an easier time tapping onto the right and left hand side rather than on the center. So typically, right hand side for right handed people is the easiest place to tap. So, Logo, center, because all the other elements uh, are more tapped uh, more often. Here, it also provides some balance to the menu. So you have these different options as uh, used and uh, as people are used to it as well. So it's a, we call a prototypical implementation. So there, there's a little bit of a differences here in our special cases. Sometimes uh, you wouldn't want to have uh, it forced to the center because then you would have to have uh, a weird implementation with the icons. So for example, they've decided to go for three icons here, and then as a result, the logo will need to be a little bit on the left. Downside of this is that uh, the menu now is a little bit more hidden. So if you have more space around the menu, the more it stands out. And typically the menu standing out is a good thing because then you will have more people using the menu. And uh, people usually using the menu means that they are more likely to be able to navigate to a place where they would like to purchase something from. So as you see, many of these have a ton of space around the menu. Here's a, an implementation of that uh, search bar on the left. So there you can just like it. If you prefer, it's uh, often a little bit of a preference thing though. So there's no hard rules for that. All right, some other examples. That's also a menu that is see-through. Here, just make sure that the backgrounds are going to be good for you. And one thing to consider here, and this is a little bit of a 
usability people always go and battle on this, whether the menu should be on the right hand side or the left hand side. Because technically it will be easier to open the menu on your right thumb. But then on the other hand, people are used to it being the other way. So if you look at like uh, big stores, Amazon, all the different ones, suppose, you'll have that menu on the left hand side, Jim Short, these kinds of things. So that is something to consider. Uh, generally, a left hand side, you can't really go wrong with that. I think that there's uh, any kind of eBay test in the world that has significantly improved with the right hand side menu. All right, so that's the hamburger menu. And uh, sometimes if you have an older audience, it can also be helpful to specify that this is the menu. But typically in e-commerce, you tend to have a little bit of a younger audience. So there, they will be able to understand the hamburger icon because uh, they've seen it on so many apps already. So typically not uh, a huge concern. Next up is the cart icon. So typically the more standard, the better. So here, this uh, store is using a back icon. But once you start getting a little bit more creative with these icons, it's uh, less likely that people are going to understand what they mean because people are also quite used to seeing it a certain way. So here's Amazon's for example. And uh, in these kind of cases, like this is uh, the way that people are used to shop online. So once uh, they are looking for some cart, they would be looking for that kind of icon. And people generally like don't tend to want to spend attention to find different things. So if it's intuitive, it is often working for you. Um, there's a little bit of localization. Sometimes uh, UK stores might want to use the bag. There's also a little bit of uh, branding there. Sometimes clothing stores specifically or jewelry stores, etc., want to use the bag because it sounds like a little bit of a higher end thing. When you go to a luxury store, you're not using a cart there. You're just coming up and coming out with the shopping bag. So that's something to consider. Next up is uh, the search bar. Now, there is a little bit of debate and uh, different views on this, whether the search bar should be on the store visible or not, whether it should be perhaps uh, hidden under the menu or whether it should just be on the footer. Now, there are typically rules to determine this. So you can definitely AP test this as an option. And then you can decide what kind of option is the best thing for you. It generally tends to depend on how deep your store is. So once you start having quite a bit of items, there's more usefulness to search. And also once people understand what kind of things that they would be searching. So that's another thing to consider. And uh, you see this uh, thing where it really depends. So for example, in Wayfair, people know that uh, they are looking for certain type of items. So if they write pet pillow here, for example, then like it's pretty obvious that they're going to get the pet pillows. If you have more branded, more custom products, not uh, such a long product line, then you might uh, choose otherwise. Now there's a different depths into this one as well. So depth number zero would be not having search at all. Typically not recommended because uh, why wouldn't you have it unless you are really just a super small one product store. Another depth is to have it on the menu after you have uh, your click here. So here's a search example from that where you can have it here. And there's levels here where you can have it either as uh, a link or something that I typically recommend is uh, something like this. Another level is uh, to have it uh, visible all the time, just like uh, Wayfair. So you can pick from those options, you can test them uh, versus each other and find out uh, the best way to do it. You can sometimes see that stores are really benefiting from this when they have the search open all the time. So they're like definitely in this store, they find a lot of value out of that. So those are the main elements of uh, the mobile navigation. Of course, there are others as well such as the wish list, or you have uh, these different uh, user icons as well. But generally speaking, those are more additions. They are the salt on the steak, not the steak itself. So typically we'd want to focus on getting these core elements right, right first before we can go and get uh, more sophisticated. A general rule for these uh, icons that are a bit more custom is that the, the more sophisticated uh, 
your audience and users, the more sophisticated you can be with your menu items as well. So ASOS, for example, can probably get away with some things just because their audience tends to be younger than some other stores that need to be a bit more traditional. So for example, Amazon or Patagonia might have a little bit of an older audience. So that's that. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to do that right now. If you'd like help meet your mobile menu optimization, go to zerogoes.com forward slash apply. Let's take a look. We are quite selective with clients these days. And if you are already having some success, it might be a good fit. All right. See you in the next one. Cheers.